I oh, welcome to this video day, which is on uh, Sunday, 21st of May. Uh, what I want to do is look at the outlook for the euro. I'm going to be looking at three technical setups, euro uh, JPY, euro CHF and euro USD. Now, before we get to the technicals, uh, what I want to do is just go through the big fundamentals driving the charts. And also I want to look at what the smart money is doing on the CFTC net traders positions. Now, in terms of the euro and the big fundamentals, obviously, the euro got a good lift to the upside when Macron won the French elections. And we saw the euro gap higher on many pairs. Now, that is basically just sentiment and relief, obviously, that Le Pen didn't win. It doesn't change anything in Eurozone at all. It just means the status quo remains in place, okay? But yeah, sentiment, relief, see the euro move to the upside. Now, in terms of the euro, it's got an additional lift. Um, in terms of the market, is now believing that the ECB uh, are close uh, to winding down their stimulus program and possibly even raising interest rates. We believe that view is misplaced. Why? Um, let's have a look at why the market thinks um, the ECB might be on the verge of changing monetary policy. Uh, we had some decent inflation or yeah, numbers out of Eurozone, um, but Mario Draghi actually said, you know, the inflation you know, build is not enough for the ECB to consider changing monetary policy. Okay, so he basically he has said it's not an issue. Now, inflation is unlikely to build up quickly if you've got a strong currency as well. Strong currency is going to dampen inflationary pressure. So yeah, Mario Draghi has said it's not an issue. The market still thinks it is, okay? Market then has focused on GDP data out of Eurozone, which was which was decent overall. However, if you break down the numbers, what you see is Germany yeah, doing really well as per usual. It really carries the zone, of course. And many other nations not doing so well. Uh, perfect example being Italy. Very low growth in Italy. It's hardly grown in the last decade. Now that, for Mario Draghi, is a concern, okay? He knows that, yeah, countries like Italy, and Italy is the fourth largest economy in Eurozone, still need the ECB's help. Also, there is still a banking crisis in Italy. So Mario Draghi, uh, the ECB, will not be in any mood to remove stimulus quickly in our view. So, yeah, I think the market has got a little bit of ahead of itself in thinking that the ECB are going to raise interest rates. If you look at what Mario Draghi actually says when he talks about monetary policy, you can see why the ECB are probably not going to change their policy dramatically, okay? Obviously, you've got some pressure from Germany who want higher rates, but yeah, Mario Draghi and the ECB have ignored Germany before. I think, yeah, they're going to continue with stimulus for the time being, even if they don't. You know, the idea that they're going to raise rates is now getting into the price of the euro, okay? I think the euro, French elections, and the view that interest rates could be on the rise. Yeah, it's pushed the euro uh, to overbought in our view. And we're going to see a break to the downside. Now, that is my kind of reading of the fundamentals. And yeah, what I want to do now is go to the CFTC net traders and see yeah, what the smart money commercials think of the euro rally. So let's just have a look at the uh, CFTC net traders and then we're going to move to the charts. CFTC net traders report for Friday. Now, in terms of this report, if you're unfamiliar with it and you're a new viewer um, to our videos, you can simply click on uh, a video beneath this one and it'll give you a full explanation of why we consider this uh, the most uh, valuable report in Forex trading. But here, just briefly, I'm going to describe how we use the report. Um, and the way it's displayed here, big thank you to Jack, one of our subscribers who put the spreadsheet together for us. Now, in terms of what we want to do on this report is um, we want to know what the non-commercials on the left are doing. Now, non-commercials are basically hedge funds, banks, basically managed money, okay? And we want to compare what they're doing 
with the commercials on the right who are basically hedging cash positions okay now what we're really interested in is when the non-commercials go against the commercials okay and the reason we're interested in this is because yeah historically yeah managed money has a, a poor performance okay and they, they tend to get caught out at important market turning points now the reason for this is obviously it's managed money um yeah basically their trend followers the greed comes into play um so not a great performance commercials on the other hand very smart in determining uh fair value for currencies and the reason they're good at this is because they're hedgers okay so they'll be working in big corporations like let's say sony amazon they just want to protect a cash position they, they're not greedy or you know governed by emotion or whatever um they just have a deep knowledge of the fundamentals they know when you know a currency has moved too far from fair value and that is the only time they're going to switch their hedges you know keep in mind they're not making or losing any money they're just hedging a cash position important market turning points the commercials are always right now in terms of this report covers all the cftc uh, net traders positions and um, we're just focused here today on the euro but i will be doing you know another video probably tomorrow on how i view some of the other positions on this report now if we take the euro against the usd um we can see that in terms of the non-commercials they've added in fifteen thousand two hundred and five longs their ratio of longs over shorts is 1.3 to 1 okay now in terms of the commercials, they've gone uh, in with another 16,752 shorts. They're basically minus 1.3 to 1. I either got that many shorts over longs. So the divergence is 2.6. Now, this actually is not a big divergence, okay? But what is significant about the data this week? Is it follows on from last week okay um non-commercial speculators have not been long the euro in three years okay now they're starting to come in and buy the euro um the commercials have not been short the euro in three years they're coming in to sell so basically the report gives us a, a, a bearish bias to euro usd but the divergence is not big as i've said it's only 2.6 to 1. But let's go down to the crosses, okay? So if we go down to the euro crosses, we can see that basically um, non commercials are very uh, bullish of the euro. And you, know, you can see on the, uh, sorry, on the uh, right here, commercials very bearish, okay? Now we've got euro AUD, euro CAD, euro Swiss, euro JPY, euro NZD. I'm focusing today on euro swiss look at this um 7.7 7 to 1 in terms of longs over shorts okay commercials 8.4 minus to 1 a, a short bias divergence 16 to 1 okay that is the biggest divergence on the report this week as it was last week so yeah commercials heavily bearish of the euro here um euro jpy uh Non-commercials 3.7 to 1 in favour of longs over shorts. Uh, commercials minus 3.4 to 1 in terms of they've got 3.4 times as many bearish bets as bullish bets. So we've got 7 to 1 here. So that's a pretty good divergence as well. So two good divergences. Another good one is CAD, uh, Euro CAD at 10 to 1. Um, obviously, we've got a bearish bias on Euro CAD as well, but I'm not covering it today. If you're a member of ours, you can see it in the cross rate section. So what we can see here is the, the smart money, the commercials are, are really taking a, a bearish view of this Euro rally. Like I said, in Euro USD, uh, divergences are not big. They're bigger in Euro Swiss and Euro JPY. So let's now, we've looked at the CFTC net traders positions, move um, and look at some charts. We're on the uh, chart of the uh, Euro JPY daily. And in terms of, before I start drawing the chart and giving my views, um, when you know the big fundamentals and the CFTC net traders, you can keep 
you're charting very very simple um, we've got a bearish bias obviously of this one and just want to go to this indicator down the bottom here uh, directional movement ABX and I've just done the single line I've taken out the D lines I could do a separate video on this I really do think this is a, a great indicator in terms of warning of the end of a big trend it comes from Wells Wilder uh, the guy who gave us the RSI which I think is another good backup indicator all you do is when you've got prevailing trend and this one is up you wait for the line to go above 40 and turn down that is the warning sign the prevailing trend could come to an end so it's occurred on this uh candle here so this looks like pretty good resistance okay now in terms of what we've got effectively is and just going back to the election this is the gap on macron worked our way hard we've gone up on the ecb come down okay now what i think happened is a lot of people tried to sell through here got caught in the hole we're going to have another go to the upside okay my own view is if it comes back through this level okay and you got if you notice uh the 20 day moving average here as well which we just bounced off so if we come back down through here take out the 20 day moving average where could we go to well i personally think you know gaps normally get filled so we can easily go down to here so take her through here but if she goes back up towards the highs okay i wouldn't sort of anticipate this going to fade into the highs wait for her to get above 125 and then sell back through the round number so come off the round number okay um in my view okay i personally think that yeah we should get resistance here if we don't just wait and see what happens up at the highs just don't anticipate a turn down come through the round number if we go through the 20 day moving average i think that's the end of the uptrend and then we'll go down to fill the gap okay so we've got pretty good risk reward if we go to fill this gap um obviously this is my view of uh, euro jpy right now uh, we'll see how this one develops let's move on to the next chart which is going to be uh euro chf the uh, euro uh, chf daily and on the chart you see here i've done the uh, adx again you've got another 40 turn down this came on this candle here um we also noted that uh you know on the cftc net traders this was the most extreme position last week and we've obviously seen a nice well a little bit of a fall it's not a big fall yet now we do have support here and the reason i'm drawing the support line there is simply because we've got the 20 day moving average um which we always uh, are looking for to come through so finding support we tried to get higher if she goes through the 20 day moving average i'd be looking for her. no surprises to go and fill the gap stop could be back behind 109.50 now if we do rally up okay i think 109.50 is going to provide resistance you sell up into this level here um, with a stop. I think you need to stop quite wide uh, behind this psychological 1 100 level. But the risk reward is quite good. We, yeah, our view is we are going to go and fill the gap. Um, so it's through the 20 day moving average or back to the recent highs. You've got actually you've got double trend line resistance there, really. Um, I just feel that. Uh, yeah, we're going to see a decent breakdown in this one. Any rally, yeah, just due to the extremity, the CFDC net traders is is not going to be a big one. But obviously, we need to see how this one pans out. So let's now move uh, to the last chart, which is going to be um, sorry, Euro USD on the uh, Euro USD daily chart. And uh, obviously, what we see is the gap on the Macron victory in the election. Cyber. we do come back to this 20 day moving average and then we accelerate on the ecb rumor and obviously those problems in washington with mr trump now in terms of the the chart obviously we finished near the highs uh we want a seller um we would come back through this level here so yeah what you want to do is just sorry if i could draw a straight line this double top here we've broken out we think the rally is gonna fade okay so back through this yeah what was the double top here 
or if she runs on we'll see yeah how she goes and look for signs of weakness now in terms of um where we're going to target uh, we should come back to obviously at least the 20 day moving average but i think yeah this up move is pretty accelerated um the the 20 day moving average will not hold at this time i think we will go and we'll fill this gap here okay um it's a question really of seeing how this one goes but in terms of i've done the momentum slightly different here i've got a stochastic uh 9892 that's pretty overbought and we've got high volatility we've got an rsi creeping up to overbought as well so i think really yeah we're gonna have the target first of all of that 20 but i really just don't think that's gonna hold and then we're gonna run on to fill the gap if we come down through here i'll probably have to stop back at 112.80 yeah if she goes through 112.30, I would probably look to sell probably back just through 112. I'm very keen uh, to basically sell this one. What I would say about Euro USD, you know, I've often said it, it's not actually my my favourite pair most of the time. I tend to prefer uh, the crosses. Um, I think with Euro USD, you do have a lot of speculators in it, so it can basically be subject to very noisy action. But yeah, you know, on this one here. Um, I do feel, yeah, decent downside, you know, uh, one, where are we now? We're 112, uh, come through 111.70, we're going to go down to possibly 107, um, but I certainly think we'll get to the 20-day moving average again. We'll see how this one pans out, just going to make a few comments uh, to close up, um, but that's my review of those three charts. Look okay, back after that uh, short review there of three forex pairs. My apologies on the last one, Euro USD. Uh, to fill the gap, the target is actually 107.30, not 107. Now, in terms of my view there, that is my view as of now. Uh, if you want uh, our daily technical analysis of major forex pairs and our full trading techniques, you can simply click on the link beneath this video. Now, in terms of um, using the CFTC net traders positions, yeah, from my perspective, and I say it all the time, it's my favourite indicator in Forex trading. Obviously, yeah, do like to look at the fundamentals driving the chart, sentiment towards the chart, and try and take a contrary view. Um, but while I'm taking a contrary view, I do like to see if, yeah, the, the smart money commercials are, are in agreement with my view. So it gives me a little bit of confidence to do the trades against, obviously, the majority. Now, in terms of... Um, I've said this before, but for new viewers, when you're trading with the CFTC Net Traders Report, you've got to keep in mind, you can't just follow the commercials, okay? Um, they're hedgers, they're not making or losing any money. So they can always, you know, take a little bit of heat against them, so to speak. It doesn't matter, okay, because they're not making or losing any money. We are, so we're going to use good stop protection. But yeah, commercials will normally come out ahead on those bigger divergences, okay, that we looked at. Um, Euro USD is not a big divergence at the moment, but I do consider the swap over of the groups important. So from our perspective, yeah, CFTC net traders are uh, essential for us and also allows us to keep our chart uh, very clean. We just obviously can just focus on the big levels. Now, in terms of the ADX, um, we could do a separate video on it. Yeah, in terms of indicators, yeah, that 40 turn down, um, if you use it correctly, and I'll do a video on what I consider using it correctly is, um, it's very effective at giving you an indication when a big trend might come to an end. So we'll do a video on that, but it really is, a, I think, an underrated indicator. I've always liked Wells Wilder's indicators as well. Yeah, the ADX, the RSI. And yeah, if you're a technical trader, uh, I always think, yeah, one of the classic books to read is New Concepts in Technical Trading by Wilder. So if you're a technical trader, I'd strongly recommend reading that book. Obviously, you've got other indicators, which are useful as well. Uh, like para sorry, I can't say it, parabolic SAR and so forth. Very underrated technician in my view, Wilder. Right, that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me. Um, I'll do another uh, report on more CFTC net traders positions early next week and also my weekly forecast. I realise over the last few weeks I've been a bit uh, slow doing my reports. That's because I've been moving a little bit busy, but I'll get back in to my usual routine shortly. Right, that's the video for today. Thanks for watching me. Take care. Have a good day.